All right, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce the next speaker who will be joining us virtually, uh, Steve Essinger uh, from Nike, who's going to tell us about AIR, their personalized product recommender system. All right, good day. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here today to tell you about some of the amazing work that the team has been doing. Uh, we predominantly focus on building the models for personalized recommendation across Nike Global. Uh, this is on our personalized product recommender uh, for Nike's digital transformation. So Nike is the world's largest supplier and manufacturer of athletic shoes, apparel, sports equipment. We're talking millions of customers and thousands of products. Now, Nike's been around for going on almost a century, uh, half a century now, uh, and has continued to evolve with the times. And so right now we're in the midst of a digital transformation. Uh, this involves modernization of our tech infrastructure, uh, proliferation of our data decision making, uh, and then also expanding the e-commerce business uh, with the goal to, to account for 50% of sales globally. Um, part of what we're doing right now is building out the foundation or the beautiful basics of which we can build uh, a world-class um, uh, recommendation system off of. And so that first piece there is to unify all personalized recommendations across Nike app, Nike.com and sneakers. Uh, now, we span a very complex landscape. Uh, there is Nike Global, which spans four geographic regions. Within each of those regions, we have Nike app, uh, uh, different apps, including sneakers. We also have Nike.com. And then we also have folks that are either uh, uh, logged out or logged in. We have a very strong member base uh, at Nike as well. And then on top of that, we also have the privacy and permissions that we want to uh, greatly respect for all these different cases in all these different contexts. Uh, so this particular talk is going to focus on personalized product recommendations. Here, we'll look at something such as a, a container context on a page where there's a product category such as lifestyle. Uh, and then within that, there's product recommendations where we're picking the actual products to show on a one-to-one -one basis with our members. So uh, as I said, we're trying to unify the recs. Um, you know, this really enables consistency. So we can respect consumer privacy consistently throughout their entire Nike experience. Um, it's really going to help with deployment and monitoring of all the models that we're shipping. It also uh, mitigates um, bespoke models that might be built and then languish in different places because uh, they're not getting the proper attention. Uh, this also allows the team to really focus um, on a core set of, of goals and a model um, and, of course, uh, avoid very expensive tech debt as well. So to do this, our philosophy is really based on a virtuous cycle. Um, we start with a core model and we focus on iterating that core model. Uh, every experience that we go to that we go to put the model into, uh, we do A-B testing. So very principal approach to demonstrate the value and lift. Um, obviously the goal is to win. And if we're not, we're iterating until we do. Um, and then this delivers incremental value for the business. So we're increasing the number of personalized digital experiences that we can power, which enhances the consumer experience. Um, this also, um, enables us to, to add value where we are getting more opportunities for more placements of our personalization throughout Nike as well. Uh, and then the fourth part importantly is to sunset. So any existing uh, models that were there that might have been languishing, uh, we want to reduce the tech debt with those as well. So this, is, this has been our, our general philosophy. So talking about our core model here, we have uh, Alice, which ranks the Nike product catalog uh, for each member based on their predicted probability of their next purchase. Uh, this is a batch model, updates daily. Um, it's open loop. So impressions data were not available at the time from the app. So we would collect signals throughout uh, uh, consumer journey throughout Nike and use that as input data into the Allison model and then rank the, um, the, the products and then return them to the, um, the front experience. And we would A-B test this um, at, a, at a much larger level up the funnel. Uh, and then, of course, we expand this across the four different uh, uh, geo regions. So going a little more in depth here with the Allison model, uh, we take consumer interaction data, think of purchases that are collected across the platform. Uh, we're using the user embeddings uh, from implicit matrix factorization, particularly using ALS. Uh, it's a great workhorse, um, are, and they're combined with uh, user profile and popularity features uh, that we put into a, a neural network. We train this feature set to predict the next purchase, uh, and we use a price-weighted categorical cross, which we loss function. Uh, and the target here is really the next purchase or next set of purchases. Um, we use uh, uh, HyperOp to um, 
to tune the model. Uh, and then we can put some experience filtering on top of it as well. Um, notably here, we take the same code base and we clone it uh, for each geo region. So we have our moon data job and then we split it up based on the geo. And so we're just using that geo's uh, consumer data and catalog as well. Uh, this also allows us to cons uh, respect consumer privacy restrictions uh, throughout the, the data pipelines and storage um, in a in a, a proper geographic um, compliance. So on top of Allison now, we can do simply take uh, the right products and pass them through a filtering bank, like taxonomy, different kinds of business logic, inventory, uh, to help with the supply side of the business, um, and then also diversification models as well. Um, so what we do here is by passing it through, we get different sets of, of let's say, contextual recommendations, such as running, but products that all fit under running or products all under basketball or low price apparel and equipment. And so we can take these and put them into different places in the app. Uh, in this example here, we have three different places um, which have different types of recs being presented to the user and then in four different regions. So here you see that Allison's powering uh, essentially 12 different experiences in the sample uh, from just one core model. Uh, and of course, we're doing many more than just 12 here with this open model. Uh, it's been wildly successful um, and generates millions of dollars in incremental revenue uh, from a relatively simple model. So expanding now, um, we finally have closed loop. Uh, that was unlocked uh, for us and um, it's, it's, it's really able to take us to the next level. So we're able to use impressions to train the model. So we're moving from a, a open loop to a closed loop uh, from a batch to runtime scoring. And now we can take context at the moment of the time the recommendation is being served. Of course, it's multi-geo and multi-experience as well. So it's really a system or a platform of which we can uh, build upon and reuse. So um, we call this Air product. Um, and what we do is we first took Allison and we folded it right into this architecture. So we're still using Allison as well. But now we can expand it with other um, strategies. And this is a, a mixture of experts type of architecture here. So think Allison, then we're going to take another approach such as co-purchases. Combine the recs from each one of those former product set, and then for each product set, we're just essentially computing the probability of click given which of the strategies fired. Um, we can always add context as well. Generates a distribution, uh, the probability of click, and from this distribution, uh, it essentially gives us an inherent explore and exploit mechanism. So. Uh, we can shape this distribution as we need, depending on where we are um, in the experience. And of course, put the filtering at the end. Uh, now, obviously, we don't need to have a lookup table. We can use a much more uh, sophisticated model here, where we essentially use um, traditional information retrieval type of approach, um, where we have now a model that's actually learning directly, um, not just what the important strategies are uh, and how well they do in each type of context, we're also including user features, product features, uh, the actual anchor of where the experience is happening, and then also context as well. So uh, time of day, day, week, and some historical information. Goes through the re-ranker model and it's the same approach. And so then moving forward, we just expand upon this. And so what we are is building up banks of many different experts um, that go into the system. And, you know, What's different here is that these are not necessarily weak learners. These are very strong learners that, that do very well in each of their particular use case. And this model learns how to subtly blend each of those uh, strategies together for, to find the optimum product to show for a given person, given all the context that we know. And then on top of this, we have a, a really, I should see under this, the foundation is a contextual gate system. So this is going to allow us to um, uh, choose different strategies, uh, different features that are allowed to use, um, uh, different score distribution, the type of filtering that we're going to do based on permissions. So whether we can use clickstream or demographic data, what is the user state? Are they logged in or logged out? And then what experience are we powering? Is it a product page? Is it favorites? Is it a cart checkout page? And so this model can be used across many, many different use cases. Um, and of course, as we move forward with this model as well, um, there is uh, a lot of levers that we're starting to pull on it. Um, we're working very closely with the business where they have actually direct input into the system where they can put their, um, their expert curation and knowledge right into the system to help it make uh, the best decision. Um, we're looking at multi-objective on the targets. Um, 
we're looking at different types of boost cut based on strategy or demand or um, dealing with inventory. Uh, and then of course, different banded architectures on top of it as well. So it's really given us a really nice platform to work with here and the team continues to expand upon it. We work very closely. Um, uh, it's a very multidisciplinary effort. We have data engineers, data scientists, ML ops, privacy, uh, product management, program management, it's um, uh, analysts with our A-B tests and such. Um, so it really takes a village. Uh, and we're just really getting started now uh, where we have shipped this system. This is, this is live today. And um, we're really excited about what we're building next. Uh, of course, it's always just day one for us though. And so uh, I wanna thank you. I hope that this uh, was just a useful case study for you, that there was something useful that you can take away from this. Um, we're absolutely hiring across the board, all levels, uh, really looking for data scientists, data engineers, uh, machine learning engineers. Um, there's so much green field in front of us at Nike and um, yeah, really excited about where we're headed. Um, happy to take any questions anyone may have. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we have some questions coming in online. Uh, our first question is from Clear Cowie, who asks, uh, given the huge number of different inputs, how do you go about explaining what the model is doing, uh, either for debugging, but also, also for the users of the system? Yeah, that's a great question. So a large part of it is that we're relying on the experts themselves, these, this mixture of experts. And so when a recommendation fires, we look back to what was generating those recs. And so by having this decoupled system, uh, rather than just having one big, large model, but having many models that fit together, you can have more of an audit path to go through about where the decision was made um, uh, along that path. Okay, thank you. And a question from Parvez Rafi. Uh, how do you perform real-time ranking and filtering? Uh, so for example, on an e-commerce platform, uh, you don't really want to recommend the product uh, that a user has just purchased. Oh, yeah, so um, that's a great question, but we're definitely going to um, uh, filter out like, like things that you've just purchased. There's just that kind of personalization on top of what we maybe call that filtering or, or type of business logic. So the system in there may still know that this is a good product for you, but there'll be just a hard filter to say not to do that. Um, however, it can start to get more nuanced where there could be a repeat purchase, right? So how much time goes by where you might want to recommend that item again? And so there's a bit of science then that goes into that and figuring out that piece. And that essentially becomes a model in itself as well. So we really have models upon models uh, working here. Okay, thank you. I think we have time for uh, one or two more questions. Uh, we have some coming in online still. Uh, uh, one question, and I'm not sure you're allowed to answer, but uh, oh yeah, maybe probably a ballpark. Uh, what's the number of users look like approximately? Oh, the uh, question is billions <laughs> or millions. Yeah, so you might that, be able to that get is some a great idea. question. Uh, love to share it. Um, we could say I, I could say millions, um, multi millions, uh, but I, I, I'm not clear to give any specifics on numbers right now, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully um, uh, next year we, we might be able to share a little bit more data in that space. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe the last question. Uh, then, uh, do you have any comments on how you do offline evaluation? Yeah, so offline, um, we're using a multi-week uh, look back window. It actually depends, it depends on a lot of things. It can depend on the experience and the, uh, also the products. Um, but it's multi-week look back, training on that look back window, and then, um, doing validation or yeah, validation on the next day and then folding that in and then doing full held out test on that following day. And so we're doing that on a daily period right now. Uh, the previous talk though was, was great. It's a great idea about how we can start uh, getting more efficient and maybe move to more of the online approach uh, in doing that. So um, definitely lots of things to explore there. Okay, thank you again, Steve. Thank you.